1989, the citizens of Czechoslovakia staged a revolution against their communist government, which had been in place since Czechoslovakia became a Soviet satellite state in a coup d'etat of 1948. But something was unusual about this revolution. It was nonviolent. This transition of power played a role in the collapse of the Soviet Union. Allow me to explain. On the 29th of November, 1989, Václav Havel's Civic Forum issued the following statement in response to concerns that the Communist Party members might be trying to infiltrate the democratic movement. In the last two days, information is coming from individual civic forums in the regions, and especially in the factories and workplaces, about communists becoming members, sometimes with the intent to control them. We are Democrats, and therefore we cannot prohibit our fellow citizens without regard to their party affiliation, from joining and participating in the new structures of the civic movement. It is necessary, however, for all who work in them to be honest followers of our movement. The basic goal of which is, as introduced in the Declaration of, on the Internal Organization of the Civic Forum from 28 November, the complete opening of an environment for the creation of political pluralism and for the organization of free elections in our country and persons whose actions are in blatant contradiction with efforts to create a democratic society while fully respecting human rights does not belong here, and it is necessary to expel him from the civic forum, this without regard to his party affiliation. The language of this source shows how sincere the leaders of the Velvet Revolution were in their goals, and that they realized how important it was to avoid seeming hypocritical. They realized that excluding members of the Communist Party based on their political affiliation, a tactic similar to that used by the monolithic Communist Party itself, would be just that, hypocritical. However, the threat of Communist infiltration was real, and although this document doesn't mention how that threat was handled, it is a useful statement on the values of the Civic Forum and the pro-democratic movement as a whole. Czechoslovakia was one of many Soviet-affiliated states to have a revolution around 1989 and 1990, but it was one of very few to have such an effective and peaceful one. The Velvet Revolution, as well as the events of Poland, Hungary, and Germany, which happened earlier in 1989, gave people in other parts of the Eastern Bloc hope that they too could become more democratic. 
Much like the domino effect that the U.S. feared in Southeast Asia and Latin America, seeing revolutions in other communist states inspired people in 1989 and 1990 to try and end communist rule in their own countries. The loss of Czechoslovakia must have been a large blow for the USSR, as Czechoslovakia was one of the most prosperous states in the Eastern Bloc. In fact, in 1990, Czechoslovakia had a higher per capita GDP than the Soviet Union. The Czech Republic is now a member of NATO in the European Union, and according to an analysis published for the Cato Institute by Ole Havrilishin, as of 2004, it remained one of the most prosperous post-Soviet states. Despite how troubling the Velvet Revolution doubtlessly was to Gorbachev, he discouraged the use of military force to suppress it. Instead, when he realized he couldn't win by political means, he decided to accept the downfall of communism in Eastern Europe, a move that, according to Anna Cienciala of the University of Kansas, prevented the renewal of the Cold War. Even Havel realized that the success of the revolution could not be attributed solely to the efforts by the people, saying in a speech on January 9, 1990, without the changes in the Soviet Union, Poland, Hungary, and the German Democratic Republic, the developments in our country could hardly have happened, and if they had happened, they surely would not have had such a wonderful, peaceful character. Lastly, the Velvet Revolution and the other revolutions of 1989 served as a signal to the USSR and the rest of the world that communism in Europe was in trouble. According to Neil Askerson of The Guardian, the Velvet Revolution showed how the temperature within a police state can start to rise silently, approaching the boiling point before the authorities are aware of it. Indeed, it was only two years after the Velvet Revolution that the Commonwealth of Independent States was formed by former mem members of the Soviet Union, indicating the final dissolution of the USSR.